There was a lot of shit that was unbalanced that I gave you. Hello, yeah, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, one and all. I hope you're all doing great. Um, we return to... Oh, we did have an unfollow. Thought so. I was like, wait, my counter's off. All right, yes. Welcome back to the peaceful future. Hope you're all doing well. I know I am. I know who exactly unfollowed. And I want to thank you all for those who do continue to support the channel. Last time we <laughs> left off, uh, the party decided to take a bit of a, a side quest journey to uh, the city of Dragon's Gate. Um, with the goal of meeting with Kurgan uh, and uh, speaking to a few other subjects amongst the rest of the party, um, they arrived having found that Kurgan has actually modernized the city quite a bit in Dragon's Gate, with even having Zeppelin landing pads um, set up and designed. As the party arrived, though, uh, many of them had documentation. Unfortunately, poor Sigrun uh, <laughs> did not. Uh, with uh, many of issues coming up, Sigrun was voluntarily taken into custody, put into a small jail cell, and got to meet one of my campaign's most beloved characters, um, as well as one of the most tragic stories amongst the <laughs> campaigns, uh, the elven mage uh, known as Ansem, the man who single-handedly caused World War I, managed to re help rewrite history, and then uh, end up finding out his family was completely killed and destroyed um, without him ever being there. Uh... <laughs> As Sigrun tried to kind of cheer him up with random stories and topics of discussion, which you'll have Offer to go rewatch the video. Offer him an amazing business deal. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, Sigrun found herself stuck there and finding out that Ansem, being one of the uh, people who had been there for six months uh, for the processing, uh, Sigrun was not a fan of that, and unfortunately uh, we ended session after that as the party kind of split up to go do their own thing. Uh, I believe Nick and Sarah went off towards the um, cap or the uh, castle uh, to uh, arrange a meeting with Kurgan and speak to him about getting uh, Sigrun released. Um, with Mion heading off on her own to go and find a nice little pub to and to track down a little more information on the general information about the world currently and how it's doing and. Well, Terrias kind of just ran off on his own to do his own thing, um, having decided that meeting with the Artificers uh, Guild that was set up in uh, Dragon's Gate not to be worth it. And as Terrias is currently driving, we will uh, join with him la uh, later. So we're going to start... Oh, no, moment. Yeah, you're fine. No, you're good. I'm, I've got other characters to start with. You're fine for now. We're going to start with Mion. Uh, hey being the easiest of the group to work with. Mion, you, uh, having managed to find your way down one of the support ladders to the, uh, bit, or the landing pad, just decided to pretty much go down without anybody really noticing you as they got distracted with Sigrun's, uh, discussion on why she didn't need paperwork to be allowed into the city. <laughs> <laughs> um, seeing as she did fight here at one time. So... I did! Yes. I'm a veteran. And they didn't Without recognize your over. rights uh, at all. So as you headed off on your own, um, heading towards the, uh, what is generally considered a lower income, it's not really poor, it's more of those people for Im who have immigrated to the city and are just getting established. Um, the housing still there is quite nice as you get to the edges. Just the roads are less cobbled, a little more dirt-based. You're closer to the outer walls. Uh, and many of the people there typically tend to either be soldiers, merchants that are traveling town to town, or um, tend to be just people that are passing through. Um, so as you head out that way, um, are you taking the back alleys or taking the one of the four main streets? Uh... Just take the main streets. There's no reason to. Okay. So as you head down the main street, you see in the center, every about 20 feet or so, there are these iron golem-like statues 
Um, people seem to be kind of admiring them. Someone seems to be sitting there drawing them. And they kind of give a like a like almost a blockage between the two rows of traffic coming through the city. Um, and as you start heading down, um, you see there's a bunch of commotion down at the uh, main gate. Um, it looks like on the... Because uh, given that Dragon's Gate is a city of four main roads that split off into many other smaller roads that go into the different districts throughout the entirety of the city... Um, and as you kind of go up, you can see that it looks like there is a giant banner being carried in by a bunch of men and women on horses. And you can see it looks like uh, a full, almost a small army is coming towards you. Um, it, they're a good ways off at this point as you're kind of on just walking. Uh, and as you see the banner, you see the upside down crown with the uh, horns coming out of it. Um, on a blue banner um, and underneath it you can kind of make out uh, with your passive perception uh, the word Clanzarius on it okay alright yeah that's not much I can do with that info yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so you just continue I assume just continue back to the pub yeah, you were I'll, looking I'll for note, I'll note that they're coming but then I'll head off to okay so as you continue, about 30 minutes pass of walking as you kind of jump onto one of the side streets um, after a while taking a turn to mostly get away from all the commotion as well as to not get trampled by the very large crowd that seems to be walking. As you kind of eye up, there's probably, you'd guess, maybe two, 3,000 dwarves uh, and elves coming up the main street now, all carrying similar banners or uh, armor depicting of that house. Um... And as you kind of run off to uh, down the side streets, finding your way to the uh, the old pub, just called literally Granny's Inn, uh, and it's a picture of a grandma with a uh, blackened eye and uh, spitting a tooth out. And as you kind of walk in, and the doors very crick, uh, kind of rickety, kind of open up almost immediately, and you see a bunch of what looks to be. Uh, Typical, what you'd expect of an average peasant look. Many of them in basic leather armor or leather gear. Um, some of them carrying weapons on them. Not much. Many of them very filthy looking, as if they've just worked the fields or come from the dusty streets. Um, the barkeep being this older wo human woman who seems to be sitting behind the uh, uh, bar, kind of eyes you up for a minute uh, and kind of uh, point or uh, offers a, or pushes a seat for you from underneath the bar. Um, and starts bringing a mug over to where she's expecting you to sit down. Yeah, yeah I'll sit. Okay. As you sit down, the woman kind of hands you an, a very pale-looking ale, and she just kind of looks at you and goes, What can I do you for, little lady? Uh, now, I think I mentioned before when I was heading here uh, last time that mm -hmm. I wanted to go to a pub that I was familiar with. Yes. This was a pub that you were familiar with. You just don't recognize this barkeep. She looks very similar, though, to the uh, depiction of the granny on the sign. <laughs> the last time you were here, right. it was a much younger uh, human woman who was working here. Um, and the place seemed not necessarily cleaner, but a little bit more lively, uh, where music was being played, a little bit of a larger crowd was. Here, you see about five people kind of relaxing and sitting there drinking or eating. Mm. Uh... So I'll say, well, I came here for two things. One's a drink, and the other's a... What's up with the main clan coming towards the city? She takes a second and goes, Well, you know, these days, the... Well, apparently some guy, one of their clan leads, apparently got captured or something like that by the new Grand Pope. And, uh, you know, the clan's meeting to discuss what to do about it. Supposedly he was killed. Some guy, or that Grand Pope, I think his name's like Malthor, Melthor... Mouthwash? I don't know. Something like that. I mean, that sounds about right. And uh, you notice one of the uh, kind of uh, shorter men looking very gnomish almost in appearance. A little bit of a larger nose, big brown eyes. Uh, his hair looks like it's been half burnt off. Um, kind of looks over at you and goes, Oh! And he goes, Meon? And takes a second and looks at you. Do I... Do I know him? You don't recognize this man. I'll kind of... Uh, do, do I know any gnomes at all? That no. That I'm very familiar with? Mm -mm. I most of... I mean, the gnomish lands were never very inviting of uh, stuff like that, so or of the circuses, so... Well, it's my name, but I don't think I know any uh, gnomes very straightforward. You are? I'm, I'm Shayla's cousin. 
Oh. Okay. Yeah. Who goes? Uh, name's Halfmore. Don't don't ask. No. If you don't want me to, I won't. He smiles and goes, "You uh, you coming up here to avoid the big army of undead that's been walking heading south?" Army of undead. Yeah, you didn't. He- I'm surprised you didn't see it on your way in. There's a massive army of just t- skeletons, un- zombies, all sorts, just heading down south. We no- they haven't attacked anybody. They just keep walking in this massive line through the continent. No, I I just flew in. Uh, we just dealt with the dragon attacks out in uh, the Tabaxi lands. Oh, dragons. That's unfortunate. Yeah, attacking the capital. That's some ballsy dragons being that close to the Silver Song uh, capital. I'm surprised they haven't yeah. ended up l- launching a full Inquisition on that dragon. Huh. Well, I don't know. They yeah. burned the capital to the ground. Nothing left. Huh. Oh, shit, I guess undead, dra- uh, undead don't have anything to do with a dragon. No. Bad things happening everywhere. Truly. I mean, there's a hint of a civil war going on amongst this clan Zarius out here. We got the fact that Malthor has basically declared war on them after capturing one of their own, even if it was fully accepted. Apparently the guy tried to assassinate the poor dude. Can't blame him for capturing him. Mm. Well, you gonna see Shayla when she's gonna be here in a week? Whole circus stopping by. Uh, no, I, and suddenly, look at the time, I will be gone by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's your fair warning, then. I may, uh, d- don't, you never saw me. <laughs> and he yeah, flips a gold fair. coin your way. <laughs> yep, never saw you. He nods, and he's like, well, if you need anything, uh, I'll be around town for the next day, and hopefully the city doesn't get put on lockdown. There's rumor, apparently, that, uh, Zarius is going to make a play for the crown, but... Seeing as he put Kurgan in charge, that's probably not much based on anything. Uh, if anyone would do it, I doubt it'd be Zarya's whole people. True. Did you hear about the man in hell? Uh, not not anything specific. Yeah, yeah, man went to Moors, apparently. Uh, supposedly, rumor goes that he's uh, planning to take over all of Moors for himself. Must be a strong guy if he thinks he actually has a chance. Uh, well, if he somehow succeeds, everything's going to be turned on its head. Sure that Ain't that the truth? First, monsters becoming sentient, invading orc cities. Now we've got, you know, <laughs> undead marching through the streets. Uh, a pope that tries to take on one of the scariest clans in the world. And now we've got this man going to hell to capture or to take the throne. These are trying times, truly, as he downs his ale. Uh, yeah, times never get better. True to that, you know, it's, well, you need anything, feel free to reach out, you, uh, I don't know if you have any other connections in the city, but I'll be here till tomorrow, and, uh, I recommend you get your lot out of here quick, uh, the, uh, local for, uh, policing force here, they've been a lot more heavy on the, uh, looking for into people. Apparently, there are people that are stuck in processing now if they don't know who you are for almost two to three years. And that's someone I know. He looks and goes, well, good luck with that. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, no. And then, uh, DM, I wanted to ask, yep. would I know anyone in Dragon's Gate that would supply me with the, uh, the stuff in my pouch I normally carry? Um, there's not many merchants that sell that stuff currently. Uh, you would know of two, um, one being a Rakshasa that has taken over, um, the, what is called the, the spider's web currently, as a kind of pseudo head, um, uh, and then the other who, he is part of, uh, Guard 34, uh, but you don't know the guy's name, you just know that you can get to him through one of them. Because I just need somewhere that sells, a uh, Dream Lily at a slightly cheaper price than the, the high tax. Yeah, you're not going to find many places except for those two who would sell it in this city. Dream Lily doesn't grow far up north very much, so the colder it gets, the harder it becomes to grow it. Uh, I'll get it in another city then, and I'll end me on section there as they go back to meet up with Nick and uh, them after the drink. Okay. Uh, Nick and Sarah. As 
you head towards the castle itself to request a meet in audience with the king. Um, is there anything you'd like to do besides that? Nick's going to look to Sarah and be like, well, we could go straight there, or we could try and see if we can gather any more information that may be useful. I doubt we will here, at least right by where he can find it out himself. Since our main bargaining chip to try and get Sigrun out of there is what information we can offer. Sarah? Helps if I unmute my mic. <laughs> yeah, typically. Yeah, I don't even know where uh, where we would find more information. Probably just head straight there. Yeah, it'd be better to head right there for now and. Okay. Uh, what are what are your guys' passive perceptions out of curiosity? Blind as Seventeen. That. Eleven. <laughs> Seventeen. Well, luckily, most of the people are talking out and about, so you don't have to be very uh, bright to catch on to this. Um, but as uh, as you continue walking towards heading up the main road, you can see there's definitely a commotion of a lot of people further down the road behind you. Um, you can't really make out what's going on down there, but you can definitely tell that there is a large group coming your way. Um, as you are walking, though, you hear people on the side of the street kind of chatting and joking, and one of a, oh, you catch on to a couple of uh, comments. Um, the first being a guy talking to his wife that you hear over here going, "You know, I'm betting that Kurgan's going to declare war on the Silver Songs and take the throne." And you hear another guy kind of walk uh, walking towards him go, "No, no, no, no. Logolthus put the Moby into Kurgan, and that's what turned him into a lich." And it just random comments that seem to be going on as you're walking by. Oh, great. Rumor mills. And as, so. you, as you continue um, heading up, you see um, a person that seems to be kind of... Or a, a couple of shops set up on the main road. Uh, <laughs> I mean, hey, man, they don't know that. Um, okay, yeah, no, as you lock, continue walking up the main street, um, you see two shops that have been kind of set up on the outside... Um, one seems to be a simple, um, magic, uh, like a couple of magic items, very low level, um, uh, items sitting on a, uh, small blanket on a wooden box of a table. Uh, you see two big bo or big barrels, uh, with what looks to be Yuan T, um, faces drawn on them. And, uh, the man kind of looking over, he looks to be a very, uh, clean cut dwarf and, um, dwar like Duragar look, gray skin, bright purple eyes. Um, very clean white beard and clean head haircut. Uh, and across from him, you see a, um, or, well, not really across, but standing next to him is a golden dragon, uh, dragonborn who seems to be sitting there and um, joking while he is selling what looks to be like random fish uh, from a barrel for a couple of copper pieces. Um, that's really all that catches your attention as you continue on. I'll remember where the fish are, because I can come back and buy them, and those will be good for the drink to eat. That's true, that's true. Alright. As you lot continue walking up, um, and finally get to the entrance to, well, what is the stairway to the main castle, um, at this point you can see this, this is about 75, 80 stairs, maybe 100 stairs as you look up this thing, walking up. It's going to take you a little bit. Um, you do notice that the large crowd is getting closer, um, and you can now start to see the Clan Zarius markings with many a dwarves and elves, uh, mostly high elves, walking your, uh, the same direction you are. Oh, great. They're coming to do a meeting. You see one of the guards kind of walking up, or kind of starts walking beside you lot and goes, uh, Apologies, uh, orders of the king that all um, compatriots that are walking up to the uh, center castle right now be escorted around by a guard. I hope that's all right. That's fine. We just figured oh. we'd come and try and speak with him as we are visiting. Uh, and okay. we have some important information, I believe, that King Kurgan should hear. You and everyone else. However, right now he's not taking audiences till tomorrow. Uh, the clans, as you can see as he looks back, are uh, meeting tonight. 
Yeah, I can definitely tell that. Um, Is there uh, something that a uh, message you'd like to give me to give him? Some, uh, maybe he will catch his attention and he may be able to meet with you sooner. Otherwise, it may be a few days before he's available. We have news on a few things that are going on in the world, such as the appearance of the Dragonkin. Dragonkin. Okay. And he starts. He pulls out a piece of paper and starts writing it down. And Along goes, with mm -hmm. the appearance of the giant tree that appeared in the Holy Dwarven Empire. I mean, giant trees aren't really much to note, but I'll write it down. It was magical and things started charging out of it to kill people. <laughs> what isn't magical and trying to kill people these days? <laughs> he writes that down. <laughs> I, he, Nick smiles and gives him a nod. That's honestly fair. <laughs> um, aside from that, Sarah, am I forgetting anything? I mean, essentially, it's all stuff related to multidimensional invasion of our worlds. That yeah. that might get his attention. Let me write that down. <laughs> I appreciate the information. Um, well, uh, I would recommend coming back tomorrow, or if you're staying in town, um, a runner will be sent for you uh, to discuss. Um, if this is something of value to Kirk, the king himself to discuss with you. Uh, I have a feeling it will, but, um, uh, yes. Also, one other thing. The high, the old high king, Stone, is definitely awake. Ah, yes, and my giddy aunt is a millionaire, as he writes it down. Uh, no, Nick, Nick looks at him in dead seriousness, dead seriousness. We have a good source on that one. You and every other human being that has been walking around. Did you, you? Apparently, you haven't heard about the attempted assassination on Kurgan, huh? King Kurgan, as he takes a second and smiles. Only rumors. Oh, yes. Uh, apparently, a Genasi tried to kill him recently. Oh, you know. I thought those were nearly extinct. Why would one waste their life like that? Oh, not very extinct. They still have their own nation to the south, but most of you, most people don't realize it as he lights down on the piece of paper, slightly racist to Genasi. Um, Nick hasn't come across them very often because he hasn't traveled south very far. You just... Okay. He comes from the south. He hasn't tra traveled further south. He went north. I will... We'll, we're going to have a map session later, uh, Cameron. Um, and he kind of goes, okay, uh, good to know. Um... You know, as far as it goes, I will make sure this message gets to him as he rolls it up and uh, kind of ties it together. He goes, uh, if you're staying at an inn, uh, feel free to let one of the local guards know. Uh, and he says, uh, my, you can call me Jeb. Uh, you can let them know that you have put note with me, and I will make sure that gets to Kurgan if he needs to get in touch with you. All right. Thank you, Jeb. He nods and goes, and I'd also recommend getting the hell out of the way as he turns and you see the massive gonna, clan walking, or starting I'm their way up. I'm grab Sarah and pull us both off to the side really quick so that we don't get trampled. All right, as they uh, walk. As we'd probably see them do to other people. Yeah, they, they've pretty much, one of the, the, the person in front, um, as many of you have never met, well, Sarah has probably seen um, Tenum uh, when he was larger, as he was a pretty well-known figure throughout most of the uh, Dwarven lands. Um, and mostly for his massive size and the fact that he supposedly killed an ancient green dragon with his bare hands. Um, but <laughs> this man, as you see this dwarven gentleman, this mountain dwarf of a, uh, gentleman kind of riding this thick, thicker donkey, uh, that almost looks like a cross between a rhino and a donkey, he would put 10x to shame as far as girth. Um, this man I, is... I'm paying, I, I see the, I see him, but I'm also going to take note of the donkey rhino. Okay. Uh... <laughs> You learn that mountain dwarves can get a lot fatter than Duragar. Um, and that apparently there is a special breed of donkeys out there you need to investigate more on. Um, mm, this goes <laughs> in the notes. Uh, and the, the guard kind of looks at you a lot and just kind of nods as he ushers you down, back down the stairway. We'll leave. Okay. So where do you two head next? Well, we can either try and... Well, I'm heading to buy some fish first. Oh, okay. Sarah? I think just tagging along with Nick, trying to find somewhere to stay. Okay. All right. Uh, as you guys... Uh, as you lot head further... Or back down the main street, um, finding, refinding the uh, two shops next to each other, 
Uh, the dwarven gentleman seems to be uh, kind of snoring as he's kind of leaned back in a chair. And the golden dragonborn, just as, who's the fishmonger, as you can definitely tell, kind of sits down, looks at you both, and goes, A half drow and a human walk into a bar. Trust me, it'd be funnier if the rest of the group was here, because we have a giant boar, too. Oh, where you? Yeah, the no misses, and the no misses because they're too short. <laughs> he looks at you and smiles and goes, "Ah, you must know of the void wolves." <laughs> and he takes a minute, goes, uh, "Anyways, uh, big boar, you talk about the 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 woman that was yelling at the dwarven guards and calling them idiots earlier." That would Probably. Ah, uh, yeah, she. She hasn't, last I heard, she hadn't stopped screaming and yelling at people and telling them uh, that they need to release her, that she was a soldier in the war for Dragon's Gate. That would be the one. Uh, <laughs> it didn't look familiar to me, but, you know, hey, what, who am I to say? I was just a soldier on the field. Uh, what can I do you two for? Uh, fish for my drink here. All right. Uh, uh, well, I got a fish for a copper piece, if you're interested. I'll pass my gold. Keep the change at this point. He nods and goes, much appreciated. Back in my day when dwarves grew golden hair, you know, uh, a gold piece was had a bit more value. He pockets it. Everything was a bit more valuable back then. True that. True that. And undead weren't walking the, play, the city streets. The princess wasn't kidnapped. And the old uh, god of time wasn't revived. The world is truly ever-changing. Oh, you haven't heard the half of it. Have you heard about the Dragon Kid invasions? Well, seeing as I was uh, at the battlefield not less than a week ago where Toutler was attacking three different forces, and yeah, no, I saw it firsthand. Those cannons they've got, real nasty things. Yeah, they've sunk our airship for a bit. Well, it sounds like you could definitely go for a repair if that's the case. I recommend the shops to the north. There's a couple of Zeppelin shops that have been opening up. I think ours is fine. We were able to fly back in on it. Apparently it's enchanted or something, so it repairs. At least that's what the guy who's holding it tells me. He nods and goes, Ah! Well, good to know. And where are you lot staying at, by curiosity? Nowhere yet. Looking oh, yeah. for a place. I recommend the Whore's Union. Uh, nice elven woman runs it. Uh, sweet gal. Sounds good to me. Sounds like a good place there. It's a well-known name across the world, at least. True that. And its founder runs this one, so enjoy it. And he kind of goes back to uh, sitting there messing around with his uh, one of his fishing lures. I, I immediately feed my Drake the fish. And... Okay. Get to moving. Alright. So, heading back down the main street, we'll come back to you a lot in a moment. Terrias! Hurrah! Uh, your party abandoned you. One got locked up in jail for uh, immigration. <laughs> They're racist. Uh, you know, and one's off talking to old ladies that run uh, taverns in dangerous parts of town. So, uh, what shenanigans <laughs> would you like to get up to? Uh, so Terius begins to head to the Artificer's Guild, mm -hmm. decides not to, okay, and then decides to again. Uh, so he has, like, a solid five minutes where he's just standing in the street waiting, uh, thinking about where he wants to go. Okay. Uh, and then he, uh, does actually head to the Artificer's. Alright, as you head up... Uh, walking uh, up there. It takes, I mean, it's about a half a day's journey of walking. I mean, this is on the other side of town as you ask for directions amongst uh, some of the locals, which they seem very kind and polite, which is in, so far in your experience adventuring with this group, not in common. <laughs> um, and as you uh, finally come to this large shop, a big uh, shop made of uh, very large pieces of wood, or red oak, um, what, uh, or what appearances. You've never seen this wood before um, in your experience of traveling. Uh, they also have something of a giant looking iron uh, like wheel that seems to be ticking uh, and causing something to go off inside the shop. You hear a small explosion um, and then you see two um, young uh, 
semi like very short human males kind of walk out both with um different colored eyes um both having like one eye purple and the other being green um one having jet black hair and being a little bit on the taller side, a little bit more uh, built. Um, definitely has more smoke on his face as he's got a, uh, looks like it, some sort of me uh, apron that's a little thicker than what chefs typically wear. Like a machine apron, basically, a machiner's apron. Um, and the other, with his very soft white hair, um, kind of walks out and looks like he's uh, basically almost had his eyebrows lit on fire. Uh, they both kind of look at you and go, uh, the, big, the bigger of the two with black hair kind of looks at you and goes, can I, uh, assist you, sir? Uh, yeah, I was looking to get some, uh, some materials... <sighs> Enchanted... Oh, okay, yeah. Don't worry, our father was the same way, and he goes, uh, wh what are you looking for? Uh... Well... I, I pull out the pocket zeppelin. Ah. Um, One of a unique design. One by the uh, Tiefling Empire, by the looks of it. Oh, it's even got Gaul's seal of approval in it. Interesting. Oh. I don't it's know who just he a is. thumb. That sounds cool. Uh, uh, yes. What'd you need? Yeah. Uh, so, I... There's a thing on this that makes... Um, well, it makes the Zeppelin shrink. Yes. And I want to put that same thing on a, uh, well, uh, well, I, I don't know a whole lot about how physics, uh, work, um, but I'm learning, uh, or magic or whatever mm -hmm. you call it here, um, but, uh, I was wondering if I could put it on these materials, and, uh, eventually when I wanted it to, it could make the thing that I make out of these materials shrink. Oh, you're looking for that. Um, so reduce, re uh, enlarge spell. Uh, it, sure. He looks at you, uh, with black hair, a bit burlier, looks at you and goes, I mean... I don't really work with magic. I'm much more of a science guy, to be honest. Um, I think Thank I, you. I have some liquids I that might be able to. to shrink them down, but I don't know about re-enlarging them. It's a chemical compound my father taught me, before, well, passed on to me uh, before he disappeared. My friend, I would love to see this chemical compound. He nods and goes, Ah, oh, well, if you're interested. Um, otherwise, my brother, the one who's quiet, as he kind of looked, the, the one with the softer features, white hair, is kind of brushing off a bunch of soot from his face. Um, he goes, uh, he's the magic caster of our group. Uh, you can ask him if you want this thing just magically enchanted. Uh, best thing I can do is give you some chemicals uh, that are left over. To be honest, as he kind of grabs you, uh, kind of puts his hand around your shoulder and starts walking you into his massive um, workshop where you're seeing like met people burning things, melding things together. Someone's kicking a giant glass ball that you're not really sure what it does, but every once in a while it lights up and then it goes dim again. Um, oh, this place is heaven. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> so, you know, actually, I, I'm more than happy to do this for you for free if you're willing to take a request. You look like a capable fellow as he kind of looks through your materials and starts kind of... Uh, jotting down notes. Oh, well, yeah, I, uh... I like to think I am. Well, you know, my father's lab uh, apparently is uh, somewhere in this world, and, you know, the research he, he discovered, I mean, just from a scientific standpoint, could revolutionize the entirety of this world into the a new industrial age. Um, you see him pulling out a bunch of chemicals, things are lighting on fire, changing color, blowing up. As he's mm -hmm. kind of starting to douse your uh, uh, materials on the table. Not even really paying attention to you at this point. Um, and he goes, you know, if you can manage to get in there and get his notebook. Uh, there's a book that apparently carries all of his knowledge and bring it back to me. I would be willing to do any uh, helping and assistance for any other items you need uh, from a scientific standpoint from here on out. Free of charge. As he starts writing down something. 
I mean, that sounds perfectly reasonable. Where's, uh, where's your pop's lab? Uh, bottom of the ocean underneath the Tarrasque. You know, <laughs> you would not believe it. You're not the first person to ask. Wait, what? As he looks up, was the other a yeah. human female with a giant black halberd? Uh, no. Oh, okay, well that, that answers one of my questions. Who the hell uh, else one knows? Of them, one of them was a Tarrasque. Um, okay. Good, good buddy of mine. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that when he's chill. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this guy doesn't seem to be phased by a whole lot, so I don't really care. <laughs> you can definitely anymore. tell he's uh, someone who's seen a lot of combat. He is fairly well-skilled, and he looks to be handling his chem the chemicals quite well, and vers uh, with little issue. Yeah. Um... Yeah, uh, the other was a, a kind of weird shopkeep slash blacksmith. He had a great worm locked up under the tabaxi capital. Uh, I traded him an artifact for some knowledge, and that knowledge was that, uh, well, apparently your pop's lab is under the ocean. Hmm. Um, I didn't know there was a Trask sitting on it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was told there was uh, some pretty cool stuff down there. I I'd give the advice, uh, don't move the Trask. Uh, then again, I think that's just general advice to live by, to be honest, as he continues dousing uh, and moving some chemicals around. You're seeing the equipment Fair. shrink down, and he's right, you see him carving something into it. Can I try and... I don't know if there are, like, papers or whiteboards or... Oh yeah, Anything all around the room, like the designs and concepts, chemical formulas and stuff. Uh, I would like to try and memorize as much of this as possible. Uh, give me an intelligence check. All right. I love that Sigrun did a stealth check today. Like they're gonna be stealthing. <laughs> I look forward to seeing what Sigrun was stealthing for. Uh, that was missed. probably when my keyboard glitched out and I misclicked on my sheet. Oh, don't worry, Just you'll get the stealth though. Straight intelligence? Yeah, straight intelligence. <laughs> Alright. Uh, nice! Composite 20. Uh, yeah, so as you see him, uh, or as you're kind of looking around his notes and looking at, he's got designs for what you recognize immediately as a biplane. There's something of a giant iron uh, contraption that's supposed to hold some strange, uh, looks like a ball in the center of it with a bunch of rings around it and little balls that are floating on these rings um, inside this giant iron casket. Uh, you see uh, something written on the board about um, radiation that you recognize in common. Um... And it shows basically him, or it looks like as a drawing of someone getting sick from it. Uh, and as you start to kind of follow along his notes, you manage to actually figure out that his uh, the recipe is actually a very simple compound. And I will send that to you after session, because I have to actually grab my notes for that. Okay. Um, awesome. Uh, when I see the biplane, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be like, hey... Hey, I'm building this. That's what half of these materials are for. He looks at you and goes, Oh, well, here. And he kind of stops for a second and kind of, you see a uh, small gnome comes running over and starts continuing, or continues the work as he uh, kind of <laughs> starts to do, point to another direction. Follow me, I got something cool to show you. And he starts walking off towards a, what looks to be a big open, or a big closed door um, to a much larger building. Terrius is a kid in a candy store right now. He, like, almost giggles uh, and follows forward. All right. As you kind of continue walking through, you see, as the guy kind of ushers, and you see these two large red orcs start pulling these chains up, and the gateway opens up, and you see a full-on uh, bomber plane from Earl... Uh, what was it? Let me find the actual image I've got for him. Do-do-do-do-do... Uh, that is not what I'm looking for. Oh my god, that is a B2, thank you. Uh, let me see if I can actually find the... There we go. 
If you guys didn't know, there is currently a, a plane called the B-2 uh, Bomber, which is a legit modern plane. <laughs> Fucking terrifying yeah. thing. Uh, here yeah, they're pretty dope. Yeah, that's what Terry S is going to be building next. <laughs> that was the plan, actually. <laughs> Fucking, that thing looks like a saucer. Yeah, good luck. So, as you see this basically sitting fully built in his, um, uh, in this big open okay. uh, bunker, he goes... Yeah, we're trying to Not learn. Bad. We've learned how to throw barbarians out of it. It's really useful for uh, portable um, <laughs> destruction. Oh. Uh, Have you ever barbarian deployment? I hear. I I'd like to show you designs for something. Uh, just get get another scientist's thoughts on them. He nods and goes, "Yeah, what do you need?" I pull out some blueprints. Uh, Obviously, the cannon is an extremely, um... He looks at you and goes, I got it's, you. It's, 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 it's a little primal. He looks at you uh, and he says, I got you. Here. And he start, do you, and he pulls out a pencil and goes, do you mind? Uh, sure. He draws on it and starts drawing like a minimized cannon. Similar uh, with the markings that he's drawn on the, the iron that he was giving you, or that he was uh, minimizing for you. And goes, if you do this with two of these, and then you use one of our new combustion pellets, um, as he basically draws what is a small version of a primitive bullet, and goes, combine this with a quick combustion spell or an ignition uh, of some sort, up to you on how you want to do that. Logothis is a really good ignition source. And he starts drawing us. Uh, this is how he's, you design... He's drawing this out, and yeah. Terry S. pulls out his own designs that are just about identical. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it looks like you have a man after my father's own heart. Um, well, to be fair, my father was more of a chemist than he was uh, an engineer, but, you know, I don't, we, we didn't really ever find out much about him. Um. Oh, sorry to hear that. Eh, I'm not. He's in a better place. Uh, for, in another timeline, supposedly. Uh, and he continues to draw. <laughs> Intense. Yes. Yeah, tell me about it. Grim Legacy. Hell of a group. Um, no, yeah. He certainly sounds grim. He looks at you and goes, yeah, this should work. We should be able to put up, build something for you that, like this within two days. You need a combustion-based engine, though. Uh, he says, we've just invented something like that. It's on a shabbier version of what we're trying to achieve. It did kind of kill our last pilot. But, you know, theoretically it works. It You can get in the air with it. See, I've been working on something, and I don't put a whole lot of faith in what people call magic. Um, he nods. I know I get a lot of weird looks about that. Uh, but uh, I've been working on this, pull out some plans, and I believe I've sent you blueprints for all these things. The I engine. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, pull out blueprints for the engine. Uh, this could be used as a combustion engine. You see uh, the pistons could fire. Mm -hmm. Um or they uh, could fire off um, and the cylinders off both ends uh, just small uh, propulsion enchantments, just back and forth, extremely rapidly, uh, causing a great amount of power. He nods and looks at this and he goes, you know, for a fuel source for this, you could actually probably use what's left over from magic. Uh, you know that Mesna crap that, you know, kind of splooshes out when you use, like, really, other people use high levels of magic spells, supposedly? It's that kind uh, of, yeah. it's a residue of basically concentrating what we call the atom uh, together to cry, cost out these abilities. It's very, it's truly an interesting concept. To be fair, my father never fully realized it, um, and we're still searching, uh, researching it. Anyways, he goes, use that. You could probably cause this thing to not even need an enchantment. It'd probably just activate based on the person flying it. And there you got a, an infinite fuel source, and at that point you can, you've basically got an infinite uh, form of transportation. Interesting. Because theoretically, Mesna, as long as it has someone in the area that can cast magic, as he puts his fingers up in air quotes, uh, theoretically it can feed off of their uh, general like area around them and be continue to go. So as long as the person's conscious, theoretically it could run infinitely. Problem is that like... Mesna is explosive like no other. I would like to roll a perception check to see if there's a ring on this guy's finger. Okay. <laughs> 
Oh, is there a reason? Like, what kind of ring are you looking for out of curiosity? He, he had me at <laughs> uh, magic in air quotes. The gay science romance we never knew we needed. An eight. Well, I mean, it's clear that yeah, most guys who work in a, a shop like this don't tend to wear jewel very uh, any type of jewelry. Um, that's most. That's why I did say that. Um, but no, you, you don't see any ring on his hand. You do notice there is a small gem um, kind of protruding from his hand, though. Uh, like the center uh, the center of the back of his hand. Uh, and on it, it just says Z on it. Or has just a Z carved into it. It's a little like red ruby. Hmm. Noted. Mm -hmm. But not going to bring it up. Unless it's from... Or in case it's from a bad breakup. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, the guy goes, uh, you know, I mean, during my times as a mercenary, I should be able to get you, if you're interested in doing something like this, we can do a contract up. Like I said, have this done by maybe the end of the day. We could probably have something put together based on your design. Uh, it would take a little less time if I can get my brother in on it, but his magic casting is apparently limited. Never heard that about science as he writes it down, or starts writing some stuff down. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Just, just under Terry S's breath, just. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, we've got. There's also a no mission inventor that you might be able to reach out to to find out more. As he, or there's a Tabaxi uh, that you might actually want to reach out to. Uh, he's a really kooky scientist. Likes to make explosive rats. Learned how to make combustion without a fuel source. Uh, last I heard, he was in the Tabaxi capital. No. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll look into it. Yeah. Uh, besides that, there's a gnomish inventor. I don't remember his name. Uh, he's my father's brother. I don't know if he's still alive at this point. If he is, you might be able to find out more from him on uh, some of, the, of his designs. There's a lot of chemistry you're missing out on here. Noted. Yes. Uh, but yeah, if you're wanting, I can, based on your blueprints here, yeah, we can have this done pretty quickly if you're interested. Uh, I can have it shrinking as well pretty easily. Uh, you'll just, well, just have to kind of give you a source to shrink it from our chemical compound. Uh, as long as you keep it filled, I mean, the thing should be able to shrink and enlarge at will uh, without the use of magic, So, which is very useful considering the situation. Problem is it won't auto-repair itself like those magic items do. Um, Fair. He goes, this could theoretically revolutionize what Kurgan's planning. Um, yeah. You, uh, if you want to allow me to make it, um, I won't charge you for it, but as long as you're okay with me reproducing it for, uh, my king's, uh, request. Well, uh, which, which thing is he asking to reproduce? Uh, the plane. With the engine. The plane. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, counter offer. He looks yeah, yeah. What, what, do you, what do you need? What are you thinking? I am extremely fine with fellow scientists reproducing these to further, well, further science as a whole. All right. I'm not too hip on the idea of producing these. And mass quantities for kings. Well, the issue is the fact that there's a giant army of dragonborn, I don't know if you saw it on your way in, uh, coming our way, and apparently they've got guys with giant cannons that can move. That's the biggest issue. So we need something that we can launch troops from, basically. The idea would be that this be used as kind of a transport. We're not going to be used, well, that in our barbarian deployment. And he kind of pulls you over and he says, by the way, uh, before your counter offer, and he kind of pops or knocks sure. on this giant iron shell that opens up, and you see this really large red orc just kind of passed out in a chair. <laughs> and he goes, So this is what we call the Barbarian Bomb, or BB for short. Uh, basically, the idea is you launch the planes fly over and drop these out of there at the back. And when they land, the barbarians are immediately uh, injected with this uh, liquid as he kind of pulls it over and shows you this red liquid, which is a chemical combat, uh, compound that makes them go into a rage basically until they're dead. And they basically, you know, start attacking. It's a great uh, creation we've come up with. 
Uh, someone wanted to use this thing called uh, a nuclear device or something, a nuke, I don't remember. Someone launched one apparently at uh, during the fight against the High King and caused a lot of people to get sick and die. So we, we've kind of decided to go away from that and go with this. <laughs> Interesting. But yeah, I'm interested in your counteroffer. Uh, so you're not big on kings, but you can understand the need is for war currently, just like all science evolves based on war. Of course. Uh, and the best medical improvements do uh, happen in the times of war. I, I fully understand the benefits. Um, my problem isn't with war in general, it's with the leaders. Well, if it makes you feel any better, this king's undead and stuck to an undead lich. So, you know. It doesn't make me feel a whole lot better, if I'm going to be honest. I mean, he hasn't um, killed anybody that yet. That being said, you seem pretty chill. Uh, <laughs> and if you truly think this is... not a terrible idea... I'm inclined to believe you. I mean, the king uh, isn't really a great guy, but he's probably the best ruler in the world currently, besides the empress, who's just more just as passive. To be honest, he's only the. Hard, to be fair. I mean, he's not really wanting to go to war, and he did help get un unseat the old high king. You know, you can't deny a man who does something like that. I mean, truly, at least he's got that on his side. And that man was just I'm terrible. Sure it was a new one, though. Yeah, a lot just quieter. Stay down. True that, true that. I mean, everyone anyway. wants that chair. That's that's the rule of life. Everyone wants a seat in the big chair, uh, and that's all we know. The only thing that's nice is this one's the one we got ruling here doesn't want to sit in the chair, so it's made him a better ruler for it. He's against. He doesn't want to go to war because he doesn't want to be killed for it, which I don't blame him for it to be honest. After the assassination attempt on his life. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I'll. I'll let you use the uh, the engine and the general structure for the for the plane. Absolutely. He nods and goes, "Good. I can maybe make three of these in a day if I use magic. If we use actual science and in proper engineering, we can produce one about a week. Um, so I'll have one built up for you by the end of the day for you, just in case." Uh, have and you ever heard of an assembly line? He looks and goes. Is that like in a line where you're, what, putting the plane together? I mean, that's that's pretty easy, you know? You make the parts, you put them together. That's what we do anyways. Oh. Are you talking? What, what are you thinking? Thousand workers, you could have at least a hundred planes a day. He looks, he goes, yeah, but then I'd have to uh, make all the parts the same. Every single unit would be basically the same design. And that's a brilliant idea as he takes a minute and looks up, starts doing math. And says, well, you I mean, know. hey, if you want to let the pilots of these planes customize them to their, uh, he goes, to their own specifications, I think that would be a terrible idea and extremely inefficient, but... He looks at you and goes, no, but we could make money off the rich people doing that and getting their own special uh -huh. ones, demilitarized, and then we do yeah, ones... There you go. It's a brilliant idea. You know what? And he pulls out uh, a piece of paper and starts writing something down. Uh, sign here for me. And he just hands you the piece of paper. What's it say? Uh, it basically states that he's giving you a fifteen percent um, piece of the of what he's going of his new industrial concept. He is creating what, and you can see at the top the name of the company is Zilpip's Military Emporium. I don't even care that fifteen percent is practically getting robbed i'm it's not really I'm, what I'm you see this guy. in this case no it's not you have just industrialized war he have looks fun. at you and goes i should be able to get the king to sign off on this by the end of the day uh there shouldn't be many issues given the clans here so that's gonna be a little longer oh piece of advice and he looks at you no no not to be rude but you are a goblin i, I assume you know uh, as he um, kind of smiles yeah, at you. I was aware of that. He goes, you wouldn't be, you'd be surprised at how many people I've had to explain their species to them. Um, don't go near the, te the main portion, the, the main castle, the capital. Those dwarves there can be kind of assholes, and your goblins aren't well loved in most places. Uh, Just tell them, aware of that. tell them you're a, a member of my comp of my corporation. You'll be fine. No one will fuck with you that way. Uh, seeing as I'm literally the at this point the secondary advisor to the king himself. And he goes, all right. So fifteen percent. He goes, uh, let me. And he goes, 
I mean, give me a second. He reaches into a small pocket dimension and pulls out a thing of gold and hands it to you. Oh, this big brown bag. You can add a bag of holding to your inventory now. Awesome. And he goes, uh, that's for you. That uh, should be about uh, 15,000 gold pieces up front. Um, for the, That'll take care of you for the next year's payments. If we make more than that, I'll let you know. And he starts writing down, uh, I should have a plane for you by end of day if you want it magically made, if you want it made by actual scientific reasoning, uh, end of the week, and if there's anything else. Uh, that should be it. He nods it's a and goes, pleasure doing business with you. Yeah, and like I said, if you end up finding my father's lab, I'd appreciate you bringing me back his notebook. The chemical compound oh, sure. in that would be, well, valued beyond anything I could explain. Absolutely, and I hope you wouldn't mind my curiosity. I would intend to look into the contents of that. Bring, myself. bring it to me first. Trust me, you'll you'll be appreciative if you do. Okay. I'm more than happy to share with you the information I gained from it, but I'd rather you bring it to me so you don't get well killed outright or cause the entire world to lose its ocean. As you kind of casually goes back to writing something in the book. Or in a book. Fair enough. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, if you need anything, you know where to find me. Uh, my brother's probably somewhere out there if you want to talk to him about magic. Um, uh, no. Nah. Smart. Also, that man, I mean, truly, strange man. Doesn't speak much. Really good with a staff, though. Very much inherited our father's magical capabilities. Um, Alright, well, yeah. Uh, I also highly recommend, if you get a chance, if you're interested in learning more about science, I hear the uh, Snow Elven lands under a guy named Dim Flame have uh, started building a school for science. So uh, feel free to enjoy if you get a chance to head that way. Should be one of the old ruins of the uh, Snow Dwarf lands. Mm, good to know. Any nods? I'll, uh, I'll note that. Okay. So as you uh, get a chance to kind of explore a bit more, you see as they're designing what looks to be also this strange, like, uh, almost iron uh, chassis uh, on uh, four circular, like, almost wheels, but with a strange black material surrounding them that kind of, as you see them kind of pumping it with air, um, using magical spells. Um, you can see that they're pulled by horses as the design currently, uh, but there's definitely an opening in the chassis itself to put something in there. Uh, and you can see him now coming up, or the gentleman you were just talking to coming over and drawing up designs on the wall for, or on that board next to it to show some new ideas. Uh, if possible, mm -hmm. um, just to save the awkward interaction of going back right after leaving, mm -hmm. uh, just to retcon, I'd like to um, bring over the majority of my adamantium. Okay. Or adamantine. Okay. Sorry. Uh, and I would like that to be used as uh, the majority of the armor platings for this this plane that's being made for me. Okay. Yeah. That would be no, that would uh, be an issue. Same, same design, just uh, with stronger armor. Way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Stronger armor. Yeah, shouldn't be a problem. You see as the gentlemen, uh, or a bunch of the workers start to get to work and start smashing, smacking, and hammering things. Uh, the smell of fire and a small explosion is heard as you walk away. Love it. <laughs> um, you do I see that... Right at home with that. They, you, you do see that they are definitely experimenting with magic as well, as you do watch as um, a few of the casters are working in what looks to be these glass vials um, to... Um, almost light up some of these uh, strange wiry contraptions in these glass balls. Um, but definitely uh, not as much science-based on that at this point. Um, as you walk out, and I head out into the street, uh, a runner, or a uh, gentleman in what looks to be very simple clothing kind of walks up to you, or comes running up to you and goes, You must be Terry S. As he kind of starts breathing heavy. Who are you? Uh, I'm just a local runner. I was uh, given a silver piece to tell you your uh, friends have stayed at the that the Horse Union on the main street to the south or for the Southern Road. Oh, appreciate you. He uh, nods. Flick him another silver. He pockets the silver and goes, "Appreciated." I'm off, and he starts running off in another direction. 
Now I'm speed. thinking about the running man, the running mailman from Legend of Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a similar idea. Uh, you know, Olivia saw a need and learned how to capitalize on it. A lot of uh, ca capitalism in the city has been developing slowly under Kurgan. Mostly for his inaction on doing anything that would cause the state to go to war again. Um, funny enough... For those who don't know, historically, countries that don't go to war, typically their economies tends to balance out. <laughs> Alright, so, as we uh, continue on, uh, Sigrun, we're going to jump over to you, as you have been oh, joy. <laughs> sitting in this cell with these other dwarves. Bored. Uh, out of my mind. What I'm a eating a bunch of the poison berries, by the way, out of boredom. <laughs> They all seem to watch you in both amazement and disgust, as well as do the guards that seem to be kind of walking by your cage. I, I offer them to anyone who's staring, like, you know. No one's them, willing like, to take any. Especially. No one what? takes Even any. The doors? Yep. Uh, uh, no one in this cell's any fun. No. Uh, Ansem kind of comes and sits back next to you, uh, the, ti the tiny ye yellowed elf. Uh, has he reconsidered my business deal? <laughs> no, he looks at you and goes, You know, truly, truly, you are a uh, unique woman. Uh, he goes, I, I suppose. I, I, I was hoping if you do get out of here before me, I could re make a request of you. Mm, what is this request? If you, you mentioned you had traveled through the Gnomish lands. If you happen to go back, there's a city with a, a large center tower in it. Uh, if you could return, if you ever end up in that area and you end up, uh, seeing, uh, Ansem's, uh, shoe cobbler, uh, you let my wife know that I'm still stuck in Dragon's Gate for me. Oh my god, the shoe cobbling business we is were in the there. <laughs> I thought, uh, I thought it was, uh, in the Dwarvish, like, here in Dragon's Gate. No, 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 I have a small business here, but I buy leather here. Uh, dragon leather was, uh, on sale, so I was buying some for some nobles, uh, that had made a commission. I have, um... I have fermented dragon mash, but I didn't get any dragon leather. My apologies. He nods. He goes, I w I, if I had known, you know, I would have had... There's all those dragons attacking uh, the tabaxi capital. I wanted to fight the baby ones at least. My party was like, no, we can't. <laughs> strong enough. I was like, okay, I'll stick with you little little baby children and I'll keep you safe. And, you know... He looks and he goes, yeah, yeah, no, I, I fully understand. Truly, it's uh, terrible when your party won't fight a dragon. Um, but yeah, so if you end up in the hey. Gnomish lands, uh, if you and you happen to be by there, I imagine my wife would be happy to meet you. I imagine my kid, my son, would love to meet you and train, uh, get a chance to train with you for a bit. Uh, you know. <laughs> uh, how uh, your son is uh, how strong? Just, uh, just, I need to know. Well, it, what physically, age? What age is he, physically, he's is roughly. A child? No, no, he's a, he's a mid teenager years. Okay, okay, so I can. <laughs> she like cracks her knuckles. Okay, good to know. I uh, I'm making note of this. He you knows. Yes, if he would love to train, I mean, I can. You know, I was training our group's uh, leader Nick, but uh, one session in, now oh, he's like, no, I can't, Sigru, and you're too strong. You know, I can't stand a <laughs> chance, and I'm like, oh, suit yourself then. Apparently he didn't like getting bruised in a fight session. I don't know. I mean, I I'm not the I'm not the the fighty the sporty type personally. I was I'm more prone to magic, but you know, um, as far as my son definitely has been wanting to train under the sword of the axe. So if you happen to be out that way, uh, and you know you happen to see him, well, just let him know where I'm at, and that I'll be back as soon as I can. Of course. He knows. I'll, I'll send him your regards, as long with uh, your wife. I'll send her your regards as well. He, he nods and goes, I appreciate Sigrun. that. Would Sigrun of course. remember the tower? Uh, as one of the uh, guards kind of walks over to Sigrun. <laughs> Probably and not. One of the guards kind of walks up to Sigrun and goes, Um, uh, Sig Sigrun. Uh, yes, Sigrun Bjorn Nekolo. Uh, your Neko. All right. Um, he checks that off. Uh, I I need. Whoa. I uh, we are going to be releasing you. Um, oh, wonderful. Your fine your fine has been paid. Uh, and he kind of hands you a piece of paper and goes, "Keep this with you." Oh. This identifies you as a citizen of Dragon's Gate. Uh, we apologize okay. for the misunderstanding. Did you you found? I assume you found the war records that accounted. No, not in the slightest. Uh, there, no, there was. Who made it then? 
Uh, some, uh, another Scrofe, I guess. He didn't really give his name, he just said he was paying for you oh. to get out. Uh, so... Maybe you're... it is a cousin of mine? I don't know anyone this far north. I mean, I... Uh, good, good question, ma'am. Uh, you... He looks, he looks, uh, Sigrun up and down and goes, Yeah, ma'am, okay, uh, yeah, and he goes to open the gate and goes, Oh yeah, the... the it, it is given away if you look uh, at her. Yeah, no, it took him a second. He's just not familiar with Scrofe. <laughs> and he goes, uh, since you have all your items and the guards were too afraid to take them from you, um, you're welcome to go free. Um, please don't cause any issues in the city. Of course not. In Listen, thank you so much for your help. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. If I had known I needed a city little paper, I would have gotten one back, you know, in the war. Before I died and came back, but that's beside the point. He looks anyway, at you and goes, what? I see you. Uh, she heads out. <laughs> you see him kind of, the guard kind of look at the other guards and say something, and one of them just kind of shrugs his shoulders and just shakes his head as Sigrun walks out. All right. Uh, I am free. I'm in the city. At that point, you do Hell see yeah. as Mion is uh, walking up the main street, um, Mion! coming back. Mion! I am a free scruffy. She like waves as she comes over. They 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 realized, you know, they were Valiant in the wrong. Lion, and, uh, too loud. Some some random random scruffy, I guess, paid for my bill. I don't know who he is, but you know, free bill I think is good thing. I mean, yeah, no, not having to pay is always the best. Also, <laughs> also, fight. also. Uh, where is the rest of the party? I mean, I'm honestly a little disappointed no one came sooner, but with how Nick and all of them are, and how scared they are of conflict, you know, I figured they were just anxious to be around the prison or so, whatever, it's, it's, jail. It's I'm at this point that, uh, you see <laughs> as Teriask is coming walking down the street with a much larger oh, smile yeah. on his face than <laughs> earlier. Teriask, where is the rest of the, uh, <laughs> the lovable party? Hmm? I just got out of prison or jail. I don't know the difference. Cells, holding it, cells. All, oh. I met a guy there. Do you guys know about the, the shoe cobbler guy? Anthem or whoever? He wants me to go to the gnome lens to send his wife his regards and to fight his son. Uh, so I have to do that. Oh, well, his wife's probably dead. <laughs> Are they? I, I know the college wasn't in too good uh, shape, but I think most things in there were uh, dead even, already. Even the gnome lands are dead dead. They're not... Oh. Is there Is not, that... like, a second gnome lands? Like, you know, <laughs> no, in the different no. world? Uh, no? Terius walks away. Oh. Are you still heading towards the oh. uh, Horrors Union? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm just oh. done with this conversation. <laughs> what? It's fair. Uh, yeah, I'll I don't... Follow. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, then I guess we are going this way. <laughs> As you lot start walking, uh... I easily catch up because Terios's legs are like the size of half my forearm. <laughs> Not only do you remind him of the genocide of his homeland, but then you go and insult his leg size. No, <laughs> she didn't say that loud. Also, Sigurd doesn't know his backstory. He ain't ever told her. You did see, he did tell you that was his hometown, one of the villages you went Listen, to. Listen, that village, uh, she didn't know that, like, all of it was dead, like, permanently dead. She just thought, like, that <laughs> one area was messed up, you know. Okay, no, that's fair, alright. Moving on, um, as the, <laughs> as the party <laughs> continues, uh, you guys managed to finally catch up, seeing the two ravens uh, on the sign, recognizing it immediately as the Horrors Union's uh, tavern. Uh, and in overall, uh, this is the headquarters. So you see this like three story building made of uh, a lot heavier stone. Um, it's very well taken care of a full bar out the front. Uh, and inside you can see a full restaurant with a quite nice interior, um, rooms set up on the next floor look to be, um, from this distance, you can see at least three of them from some uh, open windows that are kind of set up. And then on the top floor looks to be, from this kind of distance, you can generally see it looks to be a single room. Um, and as you walk in, you find Sarah and Nick um, sitting at the tavern uh, bar itself uh, with a barkeep kind of bringing over some food, some simple piece, some meat and a little bit, some drinks. 
Um, oh, look how hard you guys are working to break me free. Oh, your efforts is, gonna, is so Nick admirable. Nick is going to immediately look back at Sigrun and be like, Well, we made an appointment to meet with Kurgan to try and get you out. Seems like you got yourself oh, out. Oh, great. Good. No, I, I can't wait to meet with him about that. I think it'll go well. <laughs> how long until he realizes, you think? We or have... should I go? Do you, wait, do you want me to go back in? I'm sure the guards would love to, to, to have me there to chat. I met a really nice elf there, and they meant them. You know, I could go. I had a business deal for him, and he, he you know, he wasn't a fan. Maybe I should, re, you know, re-pitch re that. Is that the word for it? Sigrun, come and pitch that? stop for a minute so I can tell, inform everybody else what, what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> Debatable. If you give me some of your food, then you know, we all agree. Maybe. I, point at, I point at the seat beside me, and I wave over for some more food, putting <laughs> the coin down, down for it. The barkeep <laughs> nods and, br and brings over some food and another drink. <laughs> yes, My silence a... has now, been tomorrow bad. we are going to be meeting with Kurgan to inform him of everything we know about the multidimensional problem. Oh, oh, should I mention to him the thing about the dream about the whole High King and the God War and the mortal end of the world thing? Is that Nick, the good Nick thing? Nick is gonna shush you. No? Focus on Why your food, you I'll tell you about that in a minute. I'm getting to that. My food's not even here yet. Do you want me to eat the table? The man sets down the <laughs> plate try. and looks at Sigrun and goes, please don't eat the table and walks away. <laughs> Oh, since, since, since I was asked nicely. <laughs> we are also going to have Sigrun... We're not going to let Sigrun say that. We're going to have Sarah say that. Bringing Why? up the dream. She didn't because... Have... For one I reason or Sigrun another... A great talker. Thank you, Darius. You know, I've always respected you. <laughs> Anybody with an insight over, like, five can tell he's he's... <laughs> He's well, deep my... into his cups now. He, he he was having a great day, and then you reminded him of his entire. <laughs> Listen, my Nick is gonna insight pass, Pat is gonna get up from his seat and bring my Kateria's over and get him a drink. The strongest high. drink on the shelf. But my intelligence <laughs> and my trust, it, my intelligence is low. My trust is high. So she's just trusting you're being genuine. You know, heartfelt drunk moments. <laughs> you barely drank, but that's beside the point. He, Nick is gonna wave Terry S over and order him some top, sh some of the highest quality liquor as possible. The man comes over, nods, pours the drink, hands it to him, and goes, "Don't eat the table, thank you," and turns and walks off. Uh, uh, this many cups and the table's looking real tasty. <laughs> solid <laughs> bar. Aside from that, aside from that. With you out now, after we inform Kurgan of what's going on and hopefully get him to back us, either via mo monetary reward for the information or get this information out to all the major powers that be to start helping deal with it, we need to go on and get to our... get to everything mm, that we need to get to, we starting with the Growlands. We can't meet with Kurgan today. Why not? And big is... meeting. Plan heads. He's busy. Plan yep. heads. Oh, uh, maybe they already know the news then. Uh, different, different thing altogether. Other big news. Oh, big yeah, news. The pope, other big the, news. the pope Malthor apparently. Oh, Malthor! I know that guy. He uh, and fought... killed um, uh, one of the uh, other heads of the clan. That doesn't sound very pope-like of him. Are you sure you oh, got the right guy? In all honesty, the guy was attempting to assassinate him, so I can see it. Oh, political Popes be stuff. crazy, but because <laughs> I heard That's a rumor true. that during the war he he chopped someone's head clean off just no, to go that, near that his god. No, that is true. I did see that. You know, he was a very aggressive pope. You know, and I admired that in the pope, but I feel like <laughs> most people don't admire that in the pope. But you know, I'm not very. Um, religiously uh, run uh, primor primar mortal marrow mar common word for it. Yes. Frequent, I think. Maybe? I don't know. Your language you is... You did a... your best. You you tried. Now, now go ahead and eat. Aside I've from already that, eaten. It's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the table. My plate over to her. The plate's gone too. 
<laughs> to deal with table. things, Sarah says. <laughs> what PTSD did Sigrun give you, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I slide my flate over to her and finish this up with. Aside oh, from that, good. we're going to try and make sure we're stacked up for anything we might run into. So go to yes. the shop, get traps, anything you can think of. That also, my Teria, next question. I pull out a hunting, a steel oh. hunting trap. Here, take this. It's heavy as fuck. What? You're just gonna pull out a hunting trap in a bar and just shove it over it's to the goblin like who's drunk. <laughs> It's Size basically, yeah, goblins. it's a bear trap. I'm handing you a bear trap that's folded up, not opened or anything. The barkeep walks over and says, please, no bear traps in the bar. <laughs> These are simple I, rules I, as he points to the sign. <laughs> Literally reads, no bear traps or traps of any kind in the tavern. This is a wonder of engineering... <laughs> I just slowly put it in his bag of holding and close it. I, I, I grab it back out, and I grab the barkeep on the shoulder, and I go, look at this. <laughs> I, I, I quickly just get up and go, go to the rooms. I pay, go get, I pay for a room, lands, and I go up, and I lock myself in, and I'm done. in the gnome lands, my family wouldn't be... <laughs> Oh, my friend. Oh, I see what this, what this happened. <laughs> I move, I just move, the, I move the hunting trap back into the bag and you know, I get a room for each person I pay Nick, for. It. Okay. Nick, I know the solution to help Terios with this. We help him get revenge on those who slain his family and the bloodlust will cure his, cure his heart. She, like, that may be back. true, but then what do we do about the people no, that killed my family? True. Because oh, we can they kill killed those my father. Too. Yeah, no, we're not going to kill the entire Snow Elves. I'm not committing mess. I have found that. No, I can. Most issues. Listen, it is physically possible. I will take you up on that offer next time. <laughs> As Nick is having this Terrorist argument. Mumbles blood in his sleep. And paying for rooms at the same time. Yeah, one of the uh, barkeeps walks over. Uh, it's kind of a more stout dwar or dwarvish uh, with like kind of tusks kind of pop out. Definitely looks like he's a half-orc. Comes over, looks at Terrias, kind of picks him, bride carries him, uh, grabs him up, and says, don't worry, good sir, we'll, we'll take good care of you. And he goes, we'll have him. And he looks to Nick and says, we'll have him in his room, don't worry. <laughs> and starts carrying him I'm up. Not. How, much, how much am I paying for each room? Uh, it is five gold pieces a room here. Uh, Fuck, that's expensive, but I'm doing it anyways. Yep, yeah, so that will be... That's... Why don't we just share room 25 gold pieces. Yeah, 25, that's not too bad. I'll throw a two gold tip in, too, for the guy that's carrying Terry ass up. <laughs> so, Nick, you said something about the shops and right? Did you find one I could sell my, uh, ale whiskey thing in the... Because it would be nice to be able to sell it. I'm going you know. to slow... I'm going to wave over the bartender. The barkeep walks over and says, Yes, please don't eat the table. I'm not going to eat the table, but is the... <laughs> Just pounder in... <laughs> You can see he's just dead. Like it, his eyes are like th uh, thickened with black Is circles. Is the founder in? I, I, I I'm on. Yeah, he, he, look like that. he points as you he see has something that the founder may be interested in. Show him the bottle. He points and you mm -hmm. see this blonde elven woman walking Sarah up to a room. He goes, "That was her." Uh, -oh. uh I'm gonna be oh, honest. Gonna get that's gonna by a vampire. That's gonna be about forty two minutes to an hour before we're gonna see them back. Um, so what what are you selling? Oh. Show well, him uh, the bottle. Of yeah, fire show him the the little vial of the fire whiskey. It's uh, supposed to be a very rare uh, brew, uh, hard to find. I've been trying to find a a seller with <sighs> a good enough price to get it off my hand. He looks Supposedly, you. it's not worth the risk of drinking it. I would argue, but money is good. Uh, money is good. How much uh, you want for, for it? Well, uh. I don't, Nick. What was the price that the uh, guy with the great worm gave us? Didn't he give us a price was... range on okay. it? He didn't give you a price to act, that. He, he gave you the price he would pay for it. He said the yes. average price and people would pay for it. Wasn't it out of character? Wasn't it like five hundred a bottle or something like that? Something like that. Or was it cheaper than that? I don't remember. Let's just say go for aim, aim for like seven hundred. Upsell yeah, didn't bring I... him down. I think it was like something like uh, 
700, 600 a bottle or something like yeah, that. Yeah, actually, he goes, all right, and he sets down 700 gold pieces. Wonderful. He nods. Uh, he takes the bottle. Is that probably not not a good price, knowing that reaction, but... No, he takes the gold the bottle and goes, he said this was uh, not as dangerous to drink. He pops it open and starts downing it. <laughs> on the race. Okay, for those that, you know, aren't... I don't know, dwarvish enough, it burns them. I've been eating poison berries and have not died yet, so I was skeptical, but uh, I guess it's Nick, not Nick, much Nick use drinking that. You see as shoulder. the bottle empties slowly as he glugs, and then he, you just see him kind of look at you for a second, staring at you, like, oh, yeah, not he really, died. and then he falls over <laughs> backwards, and he's <laughs> unconscious. Ah, oh, <laughs> now he I wish I sell it off. Nick looks uh, at your room. That vial, that that drink had enough to. Oh, melt but now I want tongue. it. Now I want it. Oh, I should have given him half price, and we split it both ways. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> oh, my father would be ashamed. I'm gonna of... get. Can, I'm oh. gonna get over the counter real quick and check his pulse. Uh, okay, okay give me a medicine check. Alive. Give me a medicine check. <laughs> we just killed a man. <laughs> 13, is he still alive? No you feel... Body. You feel no pulse. Oh, he did. I'm going to <laughs> get the attention of another barkeep. Another one kind of comes over. And you and see this is a bald dwarf. Exactly what happened. He's, this man is like fully baby-faced, no hair on his face. Uh, looks a bit older um, and seems to be wearing what looks... Uh, is a, a two iron gauntlets and goes... Ah, oh, that's the third it's one this week. Whiskey. He drank yes. a bottle of fire with. He kind of grabs the guy and starts dragging him to the back and goes, "Don't worry, mystery meat will be back on the table in about ten minutes." Oh. Um, oh, wonderful! I'll, I'll, I wonder what the meat something is. Something that might eat that. I, I look at my Drake. He goes, Hungry "Sir, buddy? unless you're paying yes. for it, I'm not. Uh, we are not going to be giving away I pass, free meat." I hand him nine gold. Sir, that is not enough for this. I'm sorry. Uh, you can check no, the I menu. No, I meant for serving for the Drake. Yes, I understand you, good sir. Now, if you'll let me do my job as he continues to drag the body. I get back in my seat. So okay. we killed somebody today. So Mion leaves. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go up to my room, I guess. Actually, wait, no. I'm going to actually go back out in the city with my Drake and do a bit of searching around for some stuff. Okay, we'll come to I you in a minute. To follow. Okay. I want to oh, follow. this can only go well. The two <laughs> lowest intelligence adventure. characters on their own. Adventure. You remember and the Sigrun will offer for Mion to follow as well. Mion left to the, her room. She's gone. Oh, um, no, she's already gone. So this is like Grog, Grog and fucking Scanlan on their adventure. This is gonna go well. We'll come back to you two in a moment. Less charismatic and more stupid. Uh, Sarah. Yes. You have one of the best nights you've ever had. Um, this person is very well versed in every manner of meaning and things you have never known. Uh, and when you wake up, uh, about an hour afterwards, you feel a little off. Uh, you're not sleepy, you're not hungry, you just feel off. You're definitely not horny anymore. Also, there is a goat nope. in the bed, uh, but instead it's just a halfling that has goat written on his back. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's the goat. <laughs> <laughs> and as you kind of wake up, uh, you, no, one, uh, no one other than the halfling is in the room. What would you like to do? Kind of, I suppose, feeling a little off. Um, probably just like gather my stuff and go find food. Okay. Not really, like, not really interacting with whoever this other person is. <laughs> just like, yep, I'm. That happened. Sort, 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 sort of walk, yeah, sort of, sort of walk of shame, but yeah, it's just like, okay, that was fun. I'm, I'm gonna find food now, in the right. inner mind. <laughs> No, all right. So as you uh, turn and head to the door, walking out, uh, it closes. You notice that on there's only one uh, door set up, and you kind of get the gist. That this is probably mag a magic uh, set up. Um, and as you head down, you see as uh, a dwarf man is standing there with two what looks to be uh, gauntlet-like arms or gauntlet-covered arms, and he uh, clean face uh, as far as shaven. Uh, Dwarven's a little more shorter and more um, sturdier built. And the man looks at you and goes. Well, allow me to introduce myself. My name's Dolkin. 
Welcome oh. to the group. As he smiles, what are you what are you eating? What group? Um, and <laughs> anything that you've got prepared? We got mystery meat and we got real meat. Let's go with real meat. He nods and goes, all right, and pulls out a plate from underneath and he goes, all right, here you go. Nice little cut, small little steak cut up. Uh, he goes, oh yeah, welcome to the undead uh, group uh, serving our great uh, warrior, Aluvia herself. Uh, the woman you just slept with, uh, you made a pact with her. Huh? <laughs> just looking, he goes, yeah, that's normal. I was an adventurer like you until that happened as well. Uh, so was our king, in fact. Um, she seems to collect a lot of souls. Uh, so yeah, you're sworn to her. Um, enjoy that. Uh, you know, she's uh, very dangerous, very powerful, and, you know, good good luck. Well, I guess that's a tomorrow problem. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks at you and goes... Don't worry, you'll get the introduction pamphlet here in about mm, another 30 minutes. So I've got a runner getting it for you. Thank you. As, don't worry, Thank it happens a lot. Uh, the halfling comes with it, uh, free of charge most times. Um, at least you didn't have to deal with hags this time. Trust me, that was an experience I wish I never had. Hags, dragons, and oh my, <laughs> as he writes down. Um, In the back of Dolkin's mind, he hears Ben Zorwin laughing. I uh, recommend um, you enjoy the undead status. Uh, you are now supposedly poison immune. Um, and yeah. Uh, oh, also, you have to do whatever our ladyship says. Not really a big deal. She doesn't really demand much. And when you retire from adventuring, you're required to return here to the tavern and work for the rest of your undying life. I mean, at least that part seems fine. You know, as it goes, yeah, it's a great okay. retirement plan. Uh, otherwise, have fun on your adventure, and you can uh, call upon her for a packed boon later. Um, oh, and don't go to hell, uh, or moors. He goes, uh, that's the only other requirement. Okay. <laughs> man goes, all right, well, welcome to yeah, the club. Like, yeah, Sarah's got, like, this just extreme, <laughs> like, 3,000% confused face. After about a little bit of eating, a, a little while later, a pamphlet shows up and it's handed to you as this uh, young uh, like uh, human seems to run up, hand you it, and then run off. And you, on the front of it, it's a little like picture of a vacation spot in like, Hawaii. It says, Welcome to the Club of Undead Light Mages. Okay. <laughs> you... Yeah, she's just like... Mm -hmm. She doesn't even like open it up yet. Just like seeing that as the as the front. Yeah, that's definitely a later problem. And she just like puts it into her. Like, I don't know. Like I, I'm I'm thinking like an inside. I mean, I'm used to having like inside pocket type thing of something. But yeah, she's like puts it into a pocket. Probably actually into her into bag of holding plate. or something. Okay. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, she doesn't even look at it right now. Congrats, you know how you can add a pamphlet of the cult of light to your inventory. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> As you uh, enjoy your meal, we'll come back to you in a moment. Let's let's see what stupid one and stupid two get up to. Nick and Sigrun. Who's one? Who's two? I have to know. Oh, that is truly the question. We're gonna I'm answer. I'm back to the minor magic items and seeing if he has any magical arrows for sale. So as you head, kind of head up the main road, um, kind of coming back, you see the men still kind of sitting there uh, next to the Golden Dragonborn who's sitting outside next to him, um, kind of still peddling his fish. And the the Duragar man kind of looks at you and goes, Ah, oh, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, what can I do you for? Oh, you brought a friend. Hello. And he kind of looks cigarette up and down and goes, By chance, are you uh, free this afternoon, uh, young great warrior? As he takes a moment to stop. Oh, yes. I mean, my plans uh, consisted mostly of just uh, enjoying the fact that I'm out of the holding cell now. Uh, I have this dumb paperwork, but now whatever. Got, that got one, a thing. You know, I came here. We didn't need that. <laughs> he looks to you and goes, oh, so don't. Oh, yes? Oh, yeah, she, she had Sigrun Bjorn Neklo, by the way. Uh, so you could have my name. And she smiles and offers uh, her hand to shake. He smiles back and goes, Zarius of Clan Zarius, at your service. 
Oh my oh, fucking god. That is a good, a strong name. I've heard about that name. Yes. You yeah. the leader of the World of Bank. Uh, yes, lead, uh, King, or, uh, well, sec, uh, right hand to the King of the Clan Zarius, as well as leader of the uh, Black Talon Banking Corporation, uh, as well as in charge of all finances of the current uh, Zarius clan. And yes, I was there at the battle against the, the High King and Queen. I played an important yeah. part in helping my uh, co dear cousin take down uh, the tyrant known as Tenum. That's what I remember hearing about. You and uh, the king and uh, all, all the, the rumors say that you, you managed to get. He goes, it's yes. The rumors... hmm? Go ahead. The rumors also say that you helped invent the dwarven boxing. No, no, that was uh, my uh, cousin, not me. Uh, but, uh, yes, um, I, you know, I was there. Um, I am very, I am cousins to a uh, king, if you're uh, needing to meet him. However, you know, I'd like to take you out for a drink sometime. All, meals on me, if you're interested, uh, Sigrun. Uh, oh, I can never take down a free meal or a free drink. <laughs> he goes, all right, well then, if you'll, uh, uh, where, where are you staying? Uh, what's uh, is it uh, the Horse Union? I believe is uh, the he headquarters. Nods. We just came from there. Ah, uh, the uh, uh, our Union, compatriots yes. are uh, busy there, so uh, we're giving them space. One drunk, I think, one sleeping, and one uh, I think busy with the headmaster herself. Oh, the queen! She's taking another lover. Good to know. As a piece of uh, advice yeah. to both of you, I wouldn't sleep with her. Uh, she indoctrinates you into her cult. There's a whole thing behind it. Piece of advice: uh, you don't want to be in it. Uh, but if you're interested, he says, I'll, I'll pick you up by uh, uh, 9 p.m. tonight, as he looks at Sigrun. Um, all, like I said, mm -hmm. all you can eat, uh, all you can drink, and a uh, person who, uh, a uh, fully experienced guide to the city. Oh, that sounds wonderful. She leans down to Nick. Where, how do I tell time? <laughs> is, is there clocks I, around I, here? Nick, Nick, Nick I usually just look at I the sky. I will tell you when it's time for you to go. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Yes, I have a way to. I'll be there. I'll be ready. Exactly. Exactly. At <laughs> he just nods and goes, "All right. Uh, what can I do you two for uh, for today?" I'm, I'm looking for magical arrows. <laughs> that, that way, I can have something oh. other than just. I've had the longbow that's now hanging over my shoulder. This launching into magical arrows, something that is. Can grant a little bit more bite. Oh, uh, well, I have many a magic arrows. Uh, well, actually three, to be honest. Uh, as he pulls them out, uh, out these three little uh, uh, tied up grouping of arrows, he goes, uh, unbreaking air and breakable arrows. Uh, they get stuck in you, but if you gotta pull them out, you can't pull the head off. <laughs> like some other people I know. Uh, arrow, ca I've got uh, some arrow catchers, so they'll hit. They're guaranteed to hit other arrows shot at you. Uh, and, uh, Arrows of Sling, in which case I'm selling them for 20 gold pieces a pop. What type of things do the Arrows of Sling deal with? Uh, they slay people when they hit them. Well, I know that Arrows of Sling normally have a specific one. Uh, well, you know, you'll have to shoot them, uh, to find out. As I am, I just buy them, I don't ask. How many of those do you have? Uh, I have 20 10 gold pieces apiece, 200 gold pieces for the bunch. I'll take them. He nods and goes, all right. Uh, I'll also take the ones of unbreaking as well. Uh, he looks and he goes, unbreakable ones. I got another 20 of those for a gold piece apiece. And he hands them over to you. He goes, uh, if you're in need of any refunds, we don't give refunds. Um, if you are <laughs> dissatisfied with your product and you come and tell me, you, there's a 50% chance you will be killed. Um, oh, I can never be dissatisfied with an arrow as long as it does what it's supposed to do, which is to somebody else. That's what I like to hear from most of the ladies I'm dating. Myself before. <laughs> what was that, Sigrun? What? I said, what... What do you mean? You've shot yourself before. <laughs> no, I've never actually shot myself. I shot, I shot Shogun. Oh, oh that's that a Shogun. Different. Sorry, I forget the little ones. I get mixed up on that. She like leans into Zarius, you know. Sometimes Zarius, who's four foot so seven. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's talking about the the little party people. No, but Zarius, I'm his other arrows? items and see if anything pops out at me, like anything bracers of archery, anything to help me. Uh, he does have anything. a uh, he has a dragon tooth dagger that you recognize. Oh. 
Um, he uh, is... Uh, and then the only other thing he has that catches your attention is an amulet of health. I'll grab that. How yeah. much for the amulet of health? He goes, um... You know, these days these things are a little harder to come by. Uh, I'll say... Mm, 600 gold pieces. No, I think I'll pass on that. What about the dagger there, though? The dagger. Ah, you know, this fine dagger. Did you know it was rich from the mount of the maw of a uh, recently slain great worm? Uh, pretty imp impressive thing. Um, I think we ran into it recently. It's a backside? No, no, no. Still alive, Sigrun. He looks at uh, Sigrun and sorry, says, Ah, I apologize. Uh, must be another great worm. We had one under our city at one point. Uh, was recently uh, killed by a warforge, actually. Oh, and I didn't the, get there, there, there to kill it? Yes. Uh, there is one under the tabaxi capital. Oh, you Dragon must be Bear. talking about Bahadu's uh, new furnace he bought. Yeah, oh, I heard about that whole thing. He's an agent of mine. Works for me uh, whenever I need him. Oh, Recently, he, when... He's great. Yeah. yeah like, he's very good businessman. I offer, I've asked him about killing the great worm. And you know, he, we arranged a deal, and he gave me a, a boon, and now I'm stronger. He nods <laughs> and goes, Fair. Roll another stealth check. The what? The Is my character sheet glitching out? You just rolled a 25 on a stealth check. I have not three. clicked I a single I love that you're getting roll. amazing uh, stealth checks throughout this. No, I don't <laughs> and see I, anything. And I'm going to actually roll, and then I'm not going to get anything. I, literally, I don't <laughs> see it on my screen. Sigrun just dis disappears. I don't see another stuff no, check. The only I thing I saw was it medicine. Just no, popped I up for me. I don't know if it was from earlier or not, it's but probably it just earlier. showed up. Zarius got a 20. I got a 19 last. I never rolled a 20. Um, Zarius kind of looks at you and goes, I, you know, I'd be willing to part with this dragon's tooth, let's say, for mm, 400 gold pieces. I'll take it. He nods and says, enjoy! Um, a piece of advice, do not stick it up metallic dragon's rectums. It does not work out well. This is a common problem. I'm just letting you know. I didn't intend on getting that close. I yeah. plan on giving this to an ally of mine who seems better to deal with knives. I mean, I'm just telling you, there was a dragonborn I heard about that did this with a poison dagger, and man, oh man, did it not work out well. It didn't end well for him. No, it or did not. Party. I think they're buried alive somewhere. Oh, their treasure was actually in the middle of a city at one point, but, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, if you don't need anything else, he looks over at Singer and he I, goes, I'll be seeing yes. you later. Well, I had a question. Oh, uh, yes, This of ring, and she leans forward to show, because she has many rings, of course, she points specifically to the Ring of Growth. This thing, it, uh, it has made me larger, my attacks are more deadly, I am sturdier, and, uh, I feel healthier, but, uh, it has made me, uh, easier to hit and less quick on my feet. If you know what I mean. Is there a way to take away the negative uh, effects of this magic item or are those a permanent thing? Because if I could get rid of those, that would be wonderful. He looks at you and goes, hmm. You're already flirting with your date. Yeah, he, well. he's look. Uh, I mean, he's definitely a little distracted as Sigrun uh, kneels forward and goes, uh, Leans forward. Uh, yeah, I have to uh, lean down because I'm so fucking massive now. Uh, uh, Zarius kind of looks at you and goes, Yeah, I should be able to uh, do something like that. Uh, I'll introduce you to one of my contacts. Uh, he's a scientist, really good at uh, maneuvering with cursed magic items. His brother is oh, an wonder... inventor as well. Huh, that might work out well. I might want to talk to them too. He looks over at Nick and goes, you know, uh, Nick, I recommend, uh, he looks at you and goes, uh, you know, I recommend you go check them out uh, on your own sometime, uh, as he kind of looks at Sigrun and gives her a, a side smile and goes, uh, uh, there was a red goblin that was uh, walking, or had walked out of there earlier. Oh, there is. Sure, uh, you, you might want to reach out to him, he'll point you in the right direction. I'll have oh, him run me there, because they might be able yes. to make me some of these other things that I'm thinking of. The man nods and goes, well, if uh, you need anything else, you know where to find me. If you can't get a hold, if you don't what? find me here, I recommend you send a runner to the uh, main or the castle itself, and uh, I'll be more than happy to assist. I have another thing, and less of a, a a question for you, a deal, more an offer to you. I had this offer to another businessman, but uh, he turned it down. I don't know why. Clearly, you have a great business, and I would love to help advertise it. And I was thinking, and maybe this could be a thing the brain shot. Because, 
wouldn't it be smart for, for people like me, who are combat inclined, to spare enemies at at the, the, the conditions that they would come to your shop and buy things, because then they get to live, you get customers, and I, I'm sure I, we could work something out for me to get, because <laughs> I wouldn't be able to kill them. But, you know, I'm, I'm workshopping it, so I'm talking to businesses about it. He looks seeing us. You know what? I'll tell you what. Uh, tonight we'll talk about that over drinks. I can probably give you a, 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 a magic contract you can get them to sign uh, to where they have their required oh, to. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yes, I can't. We will talk about it later tonight. I'm very excited uh, to, to, to hear your stories and to tell mine, of course. I'm sure uh, you don't get many scrofy out here. <laughs> uh, not since the war. Uh, you know, many of them didn't make, make yes. it past the wall, unfortunately. Also, oh. and he looks at you and goes... If you don't mind, and he goes, uh, let me let me see that ring for you for a moment. Nah, she extends her, her hand down. He goes, uh, if, the... don't worry, and he kind of pulls out a small wand off the side of his uh, belt pouch and goes, uh, if you don't, uh, just a moment, and he taps it for a second. Uh, Sigrun, give me a con saving throw. All right. I don't. I assume there's no like advantage or anything. It's no. just a normal con save. Yeah, straight con. Ooh. Hang on. Next thing is uh, I'm doing is going to find someone to make armor for my Greek, and I was going to ask the scientist to do it. Okay. Let me get my dice. Yeah, no problem. Ah. Oh, watch me. I'll get a nat one now that I've wasted all apparently those 20s on rolls <laughs> I didn't even make. Because that'll be my luck. That'd be fucking hilarious. Oh! <laughs> See, did you, you just rolled con. Wait, it did? Yeah. I didn't think it actually rolled. You so got a one. <laughs> You got a one plus eight. <laughs> I mean, I, I can... just rolled my dice. Does that have to? Here, I can show you. I mean, it's a good thing you failed, actually. But you know, let me. Oh uh, uh, no! Yeah, you. I see it. I clicked on it, and then I was like, "Oh, I don't have a roll twenty. It's not gonna link up because that's what I usually do." So I went to roll with my dice. No, okay, you yeah, you I don't have to have roll twenty. I can see you're in the game log. I I keep the oh, game log open as okay. we're running the game. Yeah. Yeah, um, I got a better roll with my dice, but you said it's a good thing I failed, so let's see it. Uh, so yeah, you you start to feel warm. Uh, your entire body, you feel your muscles ache a little bit, but your entire body suddenly feels much warmer, and you kind of feel a little more, both tensed, but you can feel your muscles for once again. Oh, huh. that's the switch. What is that? Is that the, kind of like the dreamily thing you just use? He looks at you and goes, ah... Uh, Let's just say it's a gift from someone uh, who was on the wrong side of a situation, and he smiles. I'll, I'll tell you oh. over dinner. Of course. Thank you, then. He it, knows. Uh, I'm sure it's a great gift. It'll come in handy. I have faith. She smiles. Thank you, Zarnius. He looks and he goes, Yeah, uh, if you need anything else from me, feel free to reach out in the future. Um, of course. The only thing I could think to ask is, have you know, met anyone... That uses the last name Swathian. Uh, yes, on many of my travels. Um, it's pretty common name, seeing as it was uh, some king's name at some point. A lot of people are pretenders. King, yes. And he goes, yeah, uh, it's a pretty common name amongst humans that travel uh, on the street, uh, on the roads these days. Many will claim themselves to be related to some forgotten king to claim the throne. That's not unusual. Well, why? Well, I show him the Swafian family lineage book. Sad thing is, I'm actually fucking related to the fucker. <laughs> and my mother tasked me to. And goes, my mother tasked me with filling in this to try and find them to help me out during my travels. Book automatically fills in when it meet when I meet them. He looks so and goes. I know if they're lying or not. Well, if it's unfortunate, and that's really you have an interesting way of fortune, seeing as your family is extremely rich. My family's extremely rich. I am not. Yet. Well, there's, uh, if you go to the Nothi's Lounge, you should find more information what you're looking for, seeing as the uh, Swafian lineage isn't actually Nordic, there's Nothi's. Uh, but, um, you can find it out there. You'll find out more about your family, probably. Alright. And he holds out his hand. I tip him nine gold. <laughs> he nods and pockets the gold and goes, If you need anything else, feel free to reach out. Uh, no, I don't feel like going broke just yet today. Smart man. I give him a smile and walk off. I'm going to look for a blacksmith now to get a quote for okay. at least some basic chain armor for my drake to possibly help them with defense. Okay. And or so, some half plate. 
And Sigrun, are you following Nick? Yeah, yeah. She'll uh, smile and wave goodbye to, to Zarius, and uh, she'll follow after Nick. Okay. Um, Nick, after about another hour or so of walking around, it, t it takes a while to find someone who actually knows how to make armor for a dragon, let alone a drake. Um, and after about an hour, you come across a uh, old shop in one of the uh, little, little, little poorer districts. Um, where you see on it is just simply a simple hammer design. Uh, an old dwarf seems to be sitting in a rocking chair out front and seems to be kind of semi-blind. Um, and he kind of looks over, or kind of looks over in your general direction, not really seeing you, uh, and goes, Is that you, Kurgan? No, and if I ever am him, please shoot me. You say that about your own king. Oh. Interesting. Oh. I'll keep that in mind. He's not my king. I'm currently visiting, and I have information and for him, but I'd rather not run a city. Why do I smell pork? That'd be Sigrun, a scrofe behind me. I'm Nick. Oh, yeah, nice hello. Nice to meet you. Yeah, it's Ogum is the name. Uh, you, you smell like pork, and, like, is that human? Oh, God, even worse. Mm. You this, yeah, this I'm this looking for someone to make armor for my drake. All right. Uh, and he kind of like, stands up, kind of leaning on a little cane, and walks over and grabs your drake around the neck and pulls it towards him, and starts kind of feeling it, groping it in all sorts of directions. He goes, oh, male drake, good to know. Uh, and continues groping it in other places. Uh, mm, 40 gold pieces. Gropes for a little too long. Yep. I pass him the gold. All right. Come back by the end of the week. I'll have you armor. All right. <laughs> And don't go take a bath or something. Yeesh, you lot smell. Civilized folk don't have civilization anymore as he kind of goes walking into a shop. I uh, don't think I count as civilized, but I appreciate the uh, compliment. She looks at Nick as if... It confused. was an insult, Sigrun, but good job keeping, oh. it, keeping it up on the, on the upswing there. Good job. Upswing, Other than that, I've Nick is just going to wander around anyone. looking at potion sellers and whatnot for the rest of the evening, seeing if there's anything that... Okay. So as you kind of spend your evening out, um, eventually not really finding any luck with uh, potion shops that have anything of value at this point. Uh, most seem to be closed down due to the clan meeting. Um, as you kind of head back to uh, the tavern, uh, the Whores Union, um, you see Sarah kind of sitting at the tavern uh, kinda, uh, with the exact words of, that's a problem for another day, as a piece of paper is handed to them. Uh... Terry asks, still nowhere to be seen, neither is Mion. Um, you, uh, it's skiing late in the evening. Uh, you don't know, Ruff, or Nick, you'd guess it about like five-ish. Uh, what would you like to do? All right, well, we got to keep you down here so that you can go on your date, Sigrun. Yes, I have to I have to have a good evening with that Zarius fellow. He seems very fun. <laughs> oh, you're going to have the time of your life. Make <laughs> sure you eat him at a house and home. <laughs> That'd be pretty impressive oh, to do. The appetite now. Uh, so suddenly, I uh, know I just ate, but suddenly I, uh, I feel hungry again. I plan to Hold eat it. a lot. Hmm? What? Hold what? Be she like patient. looks around. You will eat more food then. Also, Sarah. Nick's gonna walk up to her. Yeah. Uh. Have fun, horn dog. <laughs> did you have an interesting time? Yeah, it was quite fun. Hope you, you enjoyed your up call. in that packed call thing that uh, Zarius was mentioning. Yeah, that's a problem for a different day. <laughs> ah, cheers uh, to that. <laughs> well, I got some arrows of slaying. Would you like to try and identify them to see what they slay? Yeah, uh, I can living do that. things, probably. Probably I thinking whatever serve... you shoot at them, but... Oh, no. <laughs> Thank Most you. arrows of slaying are set to a particular type of creature. If I use them on other types, it would just be a worthless thing. It's true. Yeah, Sarah just kind of, like, does the, yeah, hand them to me. I pass them all to her for a moment. All 20. Okay. Uh, as you cast Identify, uh, let me just quickly uh, PM you what they are. <laughs> if I could type. There we go. Of, 
of Lassane. Yeah, yeah. Listen, all right. My thumb's messed up right now. I can't type with it, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> uh, it seems these will be uh, pretty useful against uh, blue dragons. Slaying blue dragon slaying, huh? As you look at the blue drake that Nick has. I slowly put them back in my bag. Okay. Um, as you kind of pocket them into your bag, um, the the dwarf from earlier comes over, kind of sets some uh, plates down and goes, uh, Enjoy. Uh, if you need anything, it's on the house for the night. Uh, for our new cult, le er, cult member, as he smiles at Sarah. Um, I would like to know where the bathhouse is here. Uh, oh, we can have water brought up to your room. I would rather enjoy that. I'm gonna head up there, actually. Oh, yes. I would, I would, uh, yes, if I could have a bath for me as well. He I nods. have a date soon. Ah, Sir, you handle oh. that one. I'm not washing her. Sigrid, uh, he looks at uh, I can Sigrid. wash myself, thank you, child. Uh, do you want she, the... She, like, hops that, Nick. Do you, you, since you said date, uh, do you want the perfumed water, or would you like, uh, perfume. normal? Perfume. Remind me what that is again for you people. Uh, Please roses, water. petals, smelly stuff. Do you have something more fitting for, like, a powerful, like, warrior type? Dragon deal? musk. Got it. Dragon musk. Yes, that sounds perfect. I need to make, you know, a, a powerful uh, uh, entrance. My aura, you know, it has to be has to be on peak, peak prime. One of those things. The man looks at you and goes, are you looking to intimidate this man into bed? Or are you looking to intimidate him into giving you a good deal? Oh, uh, both, yes. considering uh, what he does. <laughs> she, he like, nods laughs. and goes, all right, I've got the perfect mixture. Uh, we will have the bath up to you within the next few minutes. Thank you. Uh, and then she turns to Nick. Which one is my room again? <laughs> Nick uh, just slowly number? grabs his face. <laughs> which number? Come I mean, on, I know I'll you take bought you the to your room. room. Yes, thank you. I know you all bought right. it for me. As you... I take Sigrun to her room and I go into mine. All right. As you lot head up to uh, the door, that is one of a magic door that's individually set up to each person who rents a room, giving them basically an unlimited uh, access. Uh, heading into your guys' room, each. Um, eventually, the baths are brought up to you, uh, giving you a chance to fully uh, get your uh, cleaned. Um, one is brought to Mion as well. The, the man sees Mion and is stoned, turns around, closes the door, and le goes back downstairs. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Mian is stoned as fuck. And um, uh, I will go to Mian's door and knock after my okay. bath and drop off the dragon tooth dagger for her. Okay. It's open. As you walk in, you see Mian is uh, kind of just stoned out of her mind, basically. Staring at the ceiling. Yep. I pass you the dragon, bone da the dragon tooth dagger. Gotcha, oh. present. Have fun. Oh, sick. I collect these. You see as one of the men who's standing out there again has come back up with the bathwater once more and goes, Oh, that, okay, he nods and goes, My apologies, turns back down, goes back down. <laughs> and he comes down to Sarah, who I assume is still sitting at the bar, kind of trying to think on what's going on. Uh, yeah, she's she's probably been, like, occasionally trying different drinks yeah gotcha. yeah and then like getting different foods just okay. to see if like anything seems to be all, interact with her different all of it tastes exactly the same and that is it doesn't have a taste yeah uh as the man comes down he goes uh he looks at sarah and goes i assume you're their leader <laughs> she kind of pauses for a second uh <laughs> No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. Nick, that Nick is. But what do you need? He goes. Uh, I take it the the skinny human and the uh, the tabaxi chick, the one with the ears, uh, have a thing going because uh, I saw him entering her room. She looked like she was kind of staring off, like my ex-wife. I'm gonna be honest. The the thoughts are. I, I didn't see a ring, so I figured I'd ask. I guess it would be news to me, but, you know, I'm usually thinking about, well, doing what I did last night when I come to places like this, so I don't really pay attention. 
Oh, you join cults on a, on a normal day? Okay, good to know. You live dangerously. Well, it's usually yeah, not you're, the intent. You're the leader of five other cults. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's usually... Let's just say that's usually not the end result. It's just a good time. Ah, uh, uh, well, you know, hey. Uh... I have no response to that as he kind of sets the, uh, the bath water down, uh, the bucket of bath water and goes, I'm just going to assume those two are uh, somewhat uh, discussing something and I'm going to come up later. So you know what? And returns back to the kitchen. Uh, if you need anything, just shout. Yeah, well, thank you. Dragon Moon Dagger. He does point. Dagger. He points up to the uh, sign that says, uh, Do not ask the barkeep what uh, for a will to live. Uh <laughs> Wait, is it that guy again? No, it's don't need the tables here. guys back. Damn. No, uh, that guy's dead. Uh, he is now currently being served as mystery meat. Um, <laughs> shouldn't have told us not to eat the table. Did, does me on? Did me on? Did you add the dagger to your inventory? Yeah. Okay. All right. After that, Nick's just walking out. Okay. It's like yeah, nah, nah. As you head back to your room, and as you all are in your rooms, kind of uh, getting ready for your day, uh, Sigrun, you now smell of uh, the. Blood of dragons, uh, in your experience. Um, at about 8.30, I'm gonna go knock on her door and be like, you have half an hour, get downstairs, you could be waiting early, he might show up early. Um, uh, okay. And as you, uh, as Sarah and Sigrun, as you guys, well, I assume Sarah's been staying down there this entire time at this point, um, as you see Sigrun come walking down with the smell of De dead dragon wafting off of her. Power. End power. Um, yeah, Sarah just kind of does the, oh, like... Extra shiny. The shake the head, like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and as you both come down, uh, Sigrun, you get, as you come down to sit down and wait, uh, you guys get a few moments of talking in. Uh, Sarah, did you have any, any advice you wanted to give Sigrun? <laughs> Or anything you want to to ask of Sigrun? <laughs> no, um, but I'll probably into just the family, uh, steal the fortune and run. <laughs> yeah, just have a good time. Don't do anything mm -hmm. I wouldn't do. As she smiles. So I should join a cult if he offers, and she she laughs. Nick, Nick just goes back up to bed after hearing that. <laughs> Might. Uh... I mean, if possible, try to find out that detail ahead of time. Um, but maybe, mm. sure. But I like life to say exciting. Yeah. Speaking that's of, for sir, sure. you look a little pale. Are you feeling well? Your uh, your usual complexion's One's been a little brought back bit to pale. life. The other now was undead as well. Great. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm I'm uh, feeling great. Just a little tired today. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I'm. D I don't know if the groom would <laughs> feel need to insight. Well, uh, you know, if you're too tired to go see Kurgan tomorrow, I can carry you up there, no problem. Don't worry. Ah, I should be fine. Get up. Get a little sleep. Sleep tonight. Don't it's, do anything I wouldn't. Sigrun literally does everything the entire party wouldn't do. As you two are having your discussion, uh, as Wait. well as the rest of yes. Oh, I had a question. If it's yeah. if it's if it's if Zarius is showing up, I have a nope. question before he arrives. Nope, if not, it's not go that. Ahead. No, go ahead. What's your question? Go ahead. I just want to know if there was like a scrofy thing that they do before dates or whatever courting they have. Like if I don't know if they put on war paint or like they no. do anything special with their manes or jewelry. Typically, or not. the only thing is the males have to prove themselves worthy by usually besting the females in combat. Um. <laughs> this is gonna be yes. a fucking fun day. Uh, which is interesting because Zarius has a plus or has a ten in his strength, so this will be very interesting. Um, however, maybe I will be the male scruffy today. Um, as you two are having your discussion, uh, a suddenly everyone feels a slight rumble, and Sarah and Sigrun, you can actually hear and you see the windows shatter on the uh, wall as a massive explosion comes from the center of castle of Dragon's uh, Gate. And that is where we're ending today's session. Thank man. you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. No. We'll come back next time to find out what's going on. Thank you all, My and day. I hope you enjoyed.